affordable, one school embracing solar energy, and the Barry and Sheena Johnson murder trial back on track in the Supreme Court. The Bahamas Tonight Northern Edition starts now. This is The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening all, I'm Megan Shepard. Thank you so much for tuning in. The Grand Bahama Development Company, or DEFCO, owns over 70,000 acres of land on Grand Bahama. DEFCO is responsible for master planning most of the land owned for tourist, commercial, and residential use within the city of Freeport. Tonight, President of the Port Authority talks about the issue of land sales with our Italia Hall. Real estate sales on Grand Bahama have been struggling for some time now. As a result, the Grand Bahama Port Authority has launched an initiative that seeks to assist persons with land ownership. President Ian Roll says the GBPA made a conscious effort to reduce the price of land and he is aware that it is the desire of many Bahamians to purchase property. As a result of that initiative, uh, land sales um, uh, we're moving in a very positive direction. So if we continue to um, have the, keep this initiative in place, I, I, I'm sh I surely think that Lances will continue to move in an upward position. He says they are also looking to market differently. We can probably market uh, our sales and our lots more in the New Providence market um, where uh, there are more people, and we plan to do that. As the economy continues to struggle, the president says with the GBPA being a part of the Grand Bahama Technology Steering Committee, this will help to build on the port's technology platform and that could help to promote the port's many programs. One or two of the initiatives that, that are in the proposal uh, are things that we've been trying to put forward uh, to the government and collectively the private sector, those who are involved in the committee uh, see that uh, these initiatives that we're trying to push will in, in, in actually cause economic activity to happen in Grand Bahama. So it's very important in, in that the Port Authority is at the table and, and actually being heard. It's Halia Hall, ZNS Network News. A local private institution celebrating a major accomplishment that can benefit the school in a big way. Sabrina Brown has the details. Bishop Michael Eldon School is the only eco school on the island and they're working to maintain their green status. BMES High recently completed its solar system that has been in the making for nearly two years, a defining moment for Principal Kurt Hollingsworth. We've, we're actually connected now. This is the final stage. The, you know, the, um, the running of the first stage allow us to see the installation with the panels being placed on the roof. That was an exciting uh, phase for the children and for us because now we're beginning to understand more of the concept that we, we have been working towards in terms of solarizing the school and the various buildings. The Northern Bahamas Utilities Company designed and installed the system. President and CEO, Dr. Carlton Bossfield. We actually developed all of the forms and we showed them how it is that they can monitor what the energy is that's generated from the solar system. The other benefit is this system is different in the application of the technology than the first system on the school. That's a grid tie system. This is a battery backup system. So in battery backup system, the yields are in the vicinity of 75% compared to about 15 to 25% on a grid tie system. For Vice Principal Sophia Howden and Project Coordinator Shang B. Salem de la Pena, the solar program taught the students a valuable lesson that has far-reaching effects. We've seen many businesses that have had to close their doors because they just could not afford the cost of keeping the air condition on, keeping their uh, clients and materials in the condition that they should have been in. And so when we think about solar power, we really believe as an institution that it, this is the way that as a nation we need to be moving in this direction. Our hope is to make everyone here in the island know about the program and they will also be encouraged to be part of the Eco Schools program. 12th grade student Ricardo Williams understands the benefits of the solar system. We thought it was going to be good to use the sun 
the sunlight to produce energy and save on the energy costs so we could use that, those funds for other um, endeavors. Co-chair of the Keep Grand Bahama Clean Committee, Nakira Wilshkum, says they assisted BMES with securing funding for the project. We would have worked with Bishop Michael Eldon to achieve a grant from the Small Grants Program of the United Nations Development Fund and so we're pleased that they would have received the funding to allow them now to move into the area of solar panels. Sabrina Brown, ZNS Network News. Concerns are being expressed about the progress of construction at the new government complex in Eight Mile Rock. Some residents have even questioned the status of the project. But Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Works, Iram Lewis, assures that construction has not stopped at the complex. In fact, he says the building should be completed by May of next year. As it stands now, we are about 35%. Um, Top-notch builders are a full crew on site. Um, so as per their schedule and per the progress to date, I don't see any reason why we would not meet the deadline by the end of May next year. Um, you know, barring there are any, uh, are any, any interference from nature, Mother Nature itself. We, we, we did our review and, and of course uh, we, we're doing our um, inspection as per the contract and, and as per our um, requirements. And so far, we are progressing well. Um, in the event that there are any issues along the way, we have a team on site that does regular inspection and we'll be alerted to it. And if the contractors need to make adjustments, if the architects need to make adjustments, we'll advise them and we'll ensure that, that they are done so that at the end of the day, the building is done properly and done to code. Testimony resumed today in the Barry and Ashina Johnson murder trial in the Supreme Court. As Italia Hall reports, the chief investigating officer was back on the stand. Attorney Jeffrey Farkasen continuing his cross-examination on Sergeant 772 Lorenzo Johnson Tuesday morning while noting that he was winding down his cross-examination. Attorney Farkasen asked for the surveillance video to be played again, which showed three persons holding guns outside of the home of Barry and Sheena Johnson. Farkasen asked Johnson how many guns did he retrieve during the investigation. Johnson replied one. Farkasen then asked Johnson if he saw three guns in the surveillance video. Johnson responded and said yes. Attorney Farkasen asked the witness what efforts were made to collect the other weapons. Johnson said a few search warrants were executed. From there, Farkasen asked the witness if his evidence is that all of the defendants gave involuntary statements. At that point, Prosecutor Neil Brathwaite objected because Farkasen included all three defendants in his question when he only represents one. Farkasen then asked Johnson if his client, Paul Belazaire, gave a voluntary statement. Johnson replied yes. Farkasen then asked Sergeant Johnson why did he not ask his client where the other two guns were and if he did not see that as an important question. Johnson responded by saying he did his best in the investigation. Attorney Farkasen continued by asking Officer Johnson if he asked Belazaire where the murder weapon was. Johnson said no. Farkasen then asked Johnson if he would agree that finding the murder weapon would have advanced the murder case significantly, and Sergeant Johnson agreed. Farkasen then told Officer Johnson that he knew that not asking a witness what happened to the murder weapon was the height of slackness. Johnson countered, saying it is not slackness because he had the information as to where the gun was. Farkasen then began to reflect on the Jonathan Ambrista case, but was stopped immediately by Justice Gray Evans. She told Farkasen not to go there and that she is aware of the Jonathan Ambrista case and what the Court of Appeals said. She told Farkasen to move on. Shortly after that, Justice Evans asked the jury to leave the room. When the jury returned, Attorney Farkasen continued his cross-examination, but focused on the statements presented by a number of witnesses in the case. Paul Belazaire, Devon Hall, and Kevin Dames are all accused of two counts of murder, one count of armed robbery, and robbing the victims of their car keys and their GMC truck valued at over $8,000. Reporting for ZNS Network News, I'm Italia Hall. Switching gears now, it was perhaps one of the biggest junior junk canoe parades ever held on Grand Bahama, and spectators say it could also be one of the best organized as well. Tonight, Kimberly Mullings gives us an overview of the preschool category. 
The first school out of the gate was Hampton Academy, who brought clover leaves, leprechauns, and everything green to the parade route, encouraging everyone to follow their own rainbows in this journey called life. The students of St. John's Christian Academy displayed their theme, Children Around the World, with a banner of flags and dressing up in native cultural attire of other countries, parading in unity for all youngsters across the globe. Growing Years Preschool competing with a Winter Wonderland fantasy theme, the turquoise, blues, white, and silver added to the cool breeze felt on Pioneer's Way. There were sleds and snowflakes, the choreographed dancers, yes, choreographed dancers were also the snow queens, outfitted with their white wigs, and the bellers were penguins. The parade would also feature little community workers of Grand Bahama, the theme of the Rising Stars Christian Academy. The dancers were nurses, the drummers police officers, there was a farmer giving out fruits, a pastor, a pilot, a chef, and so many more. Laddie's Paradise rocked their performance, proudly presenting the Bahamas National Trust, protect our shores, displaying various Bahamian gems, mainly our exotic birds like parrots. All We Need Is Love was the National Academy Preschool's theme. The students made sure we knew all about Papa Smurf's role, which was to protect the other Smurfs in the village. They brought the little blue friends to Pioneer's Way with mushrooms and all. Kinder Care Learning Center brought the beach to downtown. Among their dancers, bellers, and drummers, there were beachgoers, surfers, tourists, and more. Their banner was the picture-perfect beach scene. Martin Time Preschool made sure that God was represented. Their theme led every kindred, every tribe. The little girls were dressed in their bright colors as churchgoers, outfitted with hats, gloves, and bags, and the boys were priests. Kimberly Mullings, ZNS Network News. Stay with us, the Bahamas tonight. The Northern Edition continues in just a moment.